Oh, it's beautiful. What about when we flip it? Look at that. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Um, JP here, right? That's the name of the channel, JP Hampton. It's weird. Kind of same name as the channel. Anyway. Um, basically what I'm doing today is I'm giving you that video that I promised, right? Same shirt as my last light video because it's the same day. It's just through the magic of the internet I'm posting this um, a week or so later. But anyway, this is the light switch that I was telling you that I'm going to wire into my truck. Okay, it's a three bank light switch um, by Nylight. You can see that. Let's see here. Give me a second. All right, so this is the Nylight. It's a um, three bank toggle switch, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, anyway, but it's got LED bar, uh, rear lights, and rock lights. And so my idea is that um, eventually I'm gonna have lights in the front of my truck, um, rock lights for my t uh, wheel wells and things like that, and then rear lights uh, for when I'm backing up to my trailer or when I'm backing up into the campsite, or if I just need a little more light uh, when I'm working in the bed of my truck, right? Early fishing, early hunting, late fishing, late hunting, anything like that. It's always nice to have the extra light when you need it. So this is what I'm gonna be installing. Now, this is meant to be installed where this bottom row is always lit up. And then as you flip each switch, the top lights up with it. Now, I don't want this bottom to be lit up all the time because sometimes I park my truck for a week at a time uh, whenever I'm backpacking or doing something like that and I'm not at my vehicle. So I don't want this lit up. So what I'm gonna do on my Ram 2500 um, it's a 2015, I'm gonna be tapping into the light dimmer switch to where this bottom row only lights up whenever the light dimmer switch is on, and then this top lights up whenever I flip it, just like normal. So in order to do that, I'm gonna need a power wire that is coming from my light's dimmer switch to power in the bottom row of this, uh, these toggle switches, but then I'm gonna need a separate power wire um, that is going to be uh, bringing power in because I don't want to power my relay off of that dimmer switch. Uh, that can get kind of weird. I, I don't know how that would work, but it wouldn't be good. So I want a power wire coming in from my battery, going out to my lights, and then I also want a separate power wire that's just powering the LED lights behind this switch. That's it. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to do some testing and figure out how this works because the diagram that came with this light switch is crap. So let's see what we got here. My initial thoughts are because this is how it came from, right? You know, this is how it came hooked up. Okay, we're jumping power here just back and forth. And so my initial thoughts are that this is the power coming in because that's usually how a toggle switch works. This is the power that's going to be coming in. Okay, this is the power that must be lighting up the LEDs that's keeping this uh, lit up. And then this right here, since there's nothing hooked up to it, this is gonna be the power that is going out to my relay for my LED lights. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna check for continuity and see if I'm right. All right, so I'm gonna go with it. This one right here on each of these is what's powering that LED light here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to rearrange their weird jumper wire. All right, so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm just pulling this little protective sheath off here. I'm going to come down in here. I'm going to pry this out. Come on. I'm just gonna pry this up a little bit. Careful not to break it, but then I can get this wire out here. I'm just gonna snip that wire down in there. All right, and there we go. Bend that back. So I got that taped up. That's not gonna come in contact with anything, so I don't need to worry about it. All this other wire here, this other ground, all this is, this is gonna be the ground that is powering the LED lights in here, so. See, and then now I've got my jumper that I'm going to use for powering my LED lights into 
my dimmer switch. With this in place, I now have my jumpers for my, uh, for my dimmer switch. So this is gonna power all the LED lights in this switch. All right, so this is gonna power those. And I'll be able to control that with my dimmer switch in my, uh, in my dash. This is gonna be my battery wire. I'm gonna be running power into the switch from my battery here. This is gonna be grounded and these are gonna be my loadouts. They're gonna be going to my individual LED banks, whatever they are, LED bar, rear lights, rock lights, and so on. And these are gonna be going to the relay. So uh, let's go ahead now, let's figure out how we're gonna mount this on my dash. So here's my original toggle switch, right? It had this little sticky tape, it'd just stick right there and fall off whenever you didn't want it to. And then also I found out by uh, running my wire through here, it was awesome because I made this uh, nice little um, panel launcher, look, bam, and then it would just shoot it off when you're trying to undo your parking brake, but there we go. That's the panel that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this out in the center, and I'm gonna uh, mount those switches right here, and then that will go, whoop, actually it will go this direction there. So it's gonna go right back up in there, three light switches here, and I'm gonna be wiring into my dimmer switch. This is what I wanted to wire it into, I wanted that wired in. So in order to do that, I'm just back up behind here, push gently, and that whole switch comes out. All right, let's go ahead now, let's take this, let's get this cut out, and let's make sure that we can mount our switches on there. So this is uh, an inch and a half by It's like two and seven eighths. All right, so I just cut out a template here. Just gonna make it easy. Take the worst worker if you have, all worn out. You're gonna make sure that it's black on black so you can barely see it. Makes things more interesting when you're cutting it out. There we go. You do have to remember that this is just to get these switches through. You can be a little bit bigger on your other side of your line and everything because you're not mounting the switches. They're not locking into place on here. They're locking into the place on this plate and then we're gonna screw this plate into that. So let's cut this out though. All right, and then you just wanna use like the biggest, bulkiest thing you have to cut this out because I don't have a uh, Dremel and here we go. There we go, all right? You know what they say, beauty is in the eye of the razor blade holder. So I just clean this all up. <laughs> My melted mess there. But now, taking these again, all that I did is I came in here, I lined it up, made sure everything was level, and then just taking my pencil here, I'm gonna mark my holes so that I can come in here now with my, um, uh, drill bit and drill a pilot hole so that I can mount these screws in there. All right, but let's go ahead and let's get this in place and I'm gonna wire in just some, uh, maybe some spade connectors or something to make this easy to connect. Let's see how we do. All right, so for my connections, I'm just gonna be using um, a male and female spade. Now you can do this with any male and female spade. It doesn't have to be these fancy um, crimping ones. These are just, this is just what I have, so. Aren't they pretty though? They're so pretty. All right, and then on this side here, I'm just gonna be connecting my female uh, spades. Gotta be really careful when I'm cutting through here because I don't wanna cut my power wire and my ground at the same time, otherwise I'll ruin, I'll ruin my clippers. All right, and then once you get that stripped back, it's the same idea, just this time I'm putting a, a female spade on so once i get this one on here and these ones have a little um you know protective sheath that i got and then i'll, I'll tape it so i'm gonna go ahead now and i will do the hot wire so this is the battery wire and this is gonna be the load wire going out and here you are with the last one i'm just gonna make sure that these stay covered because i did not pull my fuse out so uh i do recommend pulling your fuse out but i just didn't do it but i left this one a little bit long because it has to go a little bit further to connect to the light switch here. All right, so, um, but here we are, let's get these connected now, and then we will tap into our wiring harness uh, so that we can access that dimmer 
um, signal there. Okay, so just using my razor blade, I just peeled back some of this, um, it's almost like duct tape that they have this uh, wiring loom wrapped in. So, all right. So I'm gonna show you right now how we're gonna connect to that. So these are scotch locks or quick splices or whatever you wanna call them, but they are basically every car electrician's nightmare. One of the reason is because a lot of people like to run high voltage through them or they like to stick them underneath the hood or places where they're gonna get water to them and they just, they, they create nightmares. That's exactly what they do. And so um, in this application, I, it's not really a problem because um, it's low voltage. I'm underneath the dash. There's not a lot of movement and jarring and things like that. And um, it's not something that's gonna be uh, sending a, a lot of voltage through it. So um, in my opinion, this is the easiest way to do that. Now, another thing I could do is just peel back a little bit and solder a wire onto, uh, onto here, or I could cut it and they make butt connectors that are three-way crimps and I can just crimp those in there as well. So this is what I have on hand. This is what I'm doing. Um, if you don't want to do that on your vehicle, then uh, you know feel free to use one of the other multiple ways, but this is the way that I'm gonna do it. And so I am using a purple wire um, because I wanna designate this one um, different from my other ones. I'm just gonna keep it a little long here so that I have plenty of room to go from here to my switch. Okay, and so the way that that works on a scotch lock is you've got one that dead ends into it and then this goes right in the middle like this. And so that goes in here like that. Actually, I'm gonna do this going the other direction. So that my wiring is not interfering. But you can see then once that's in, the, in, in place right there, um, you push down on this little metal piece and this metal piece um, cuts through the outer covering of the wire and then connects those two wires together. So you can see why that would be, um, you know, subject to water intrusion or things like that. All right, so you just wanna make sure you get that pushed down. You can see it actually will start to come through the other side, so you don't wanna push that hard. And then that locks it in into place right there. All right, so there we have it. Now, if I ever wanna remove that, I can pull that out and I can just tape that up and uh, it'd be like it was never there. Now, you could also, if you wanted, you could run a fuse in between here. But remember, the load that I'm doing is not to run these switches, and this is already fused. All that I am doing, I'm lighting up three little LEDs. It's probably not even gonna be um, a fraction of a watt. So I'm not worried about any extra load on that fuse there. All right, now let's go drill our pilot holes so that we can mount our switch. All right, so really simple, right? Drill my pilot holes. So I went ahead and hooked into the orange and the gray, which is the other side of that dimmer switch. And now that works correctly. So do not do the orange and brown, do the orange and gray, okay? Again, scotch lock and all I did for that other one where I already um, wired into, I just removed the old scotch lock, taped it up, and then put a new scotch lock on with this one. So we're gonna hook our light switch back up. Make sure you go back through the hole. Get that hooked in where it goes. There we go, all right? And so coming from the dimmer, I'm just coming down to all of these bottom lights. So you can see all those there, the bottom one. And then my loadout, my yellow, hooked to the other side of my LED bar switch. And this would change depending on which lights it's running to. Right, and then the battery power in is here, the red, and then the battery power black. So I got all that taped up. <laughs> all right, now that I undid those and put those back in the right way, now I can just this guy in, run these guys back up in there, and then screw that on there. All right, so I got that last screw in. Now I'm just gonna clean all this up, and I'll show you how cool it looks at night. And all due to the power of editing, here we are. It is nighttime. Let's check these out. Oh, it's beautiful. 
What about when we flip it? Look at that. Well, there it is. Another project done for the day. Uh, it works perfectly. I, I really like how the switch lights up at night. I like how it lights up even more and it even changes the angle too to where I can see which one is on when I look down. Um, so that's pretty cool. Something that I didn't really plan on, but if anybody asks, I'm going to tell them I planned on it. Uh, but no, it's working perfectly. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble with one of those wires, right? It was like the opposite effect of dimming. You try to dim and it brightens it. You try to brighten it and it dims. So remember, switch that over. It's the orange and gray one. Uh, internet, not orange and brown. Okay, the orange and gray. So anyway, I hope that helped you. And if it did, make sure you hit that like button. And uh, if you want to see, if you want to check out um, any of the other videos that I have pertaining to this LED bar, um, just check right up here. Should be there, right? And then, uh, but check that out. And then um, again, like and subscribe. All right, guys, make sure you hit that notification bell for anything uh, new that's coming up. And again, thanks for watching and stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next video.